Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.13. It's our introduction to like terms and polynomials. Uh, we've introduced polynomials in a previous section, but that was before we had talked about integers, those negative numbers. So we're going to do a little bit of a review when it comes to terms. Here we have a series of a, uh, poly or monomials, which are a special type of polynomial, right? And we want to determine the numerical coefficient. So if we look at these, the numerical coefficient, we're just looking at the numbers. So let's identify those. For the first term, I see the number 3. So these are the variables. And its numerical coefficient is 3. If I look at this, I don't see a coefficient. So I have to assume in order to have n r, I have to have at least one of them. So its coefficient is 1. But what about this one right here? We see it says negative x. Well, if we don't worry about that negative for a moment, we know that this has to have at least one x, because I don't see a number. Well, it's the negative of that value. Well, that value is 1, so its numerical coefficient is negative 1. Keep that in mind. When you see a negative in front of a variable, its coefficient is a negative 1. This here, the term is just 5. 5 is just an integer that we're familiar with. That is a numerical coefficient. If we recall when we identified the degree of terms, this would be a zero degree monomial. We have negative 4y. Well, we understand integers. The number I see here, this sign belongs to that number, just like this sign belonged to the number 1, giving us that numerical coefficient of negative 1. So this is negative 4. That's an integer that we're now familiar with. Now, even though this is x squared, we had an x squared there. It didn't change the numerical coefficient. I don't see a number out front. But I have to assume there are one of these x's being squared. So its numerical coefficient is 1. Now this one, we have a combination of things happening here. I see x. I don't see a number directly out front of it, but I see one below it. It's saying divide by 4. Well, I first assess it and say, well, there would be a 1 there. So I lightly wrote it in. And now I can see 1 divided by 4. Well, the coefficient of this x is 1 fourth, the 1 divided by 4. And that's associated to the commutative property of multiplication or division. We can do x divided by 4, or we can do 1 divided by 4. The order really doesn't matter. So since we're just looking at the numerical coefficient, we concentrate on the numbers 1 over 4. So its coefficient is 1 fourth. All right, so let's define what it means to be like terms. We understand coefficients, and we know what variables are. But to be like terms, they have to have the same variable. The variables have to be the same. If it contains an x, the other term must contain an x in order to be considered a like term. But they also have to be raised to the same power. That variable has to have the same exponent. So let's identify if these are like terms. So we're going to start right here. We look at these two. The coefficients to determine a like term don't matter at this point, because we just want to say, do they have the same variable? Do they have the same power on those variables? So here I have an x, and it's being squared, times y. Here I have an x squared times y. They both have x and y. The x is squared for both of them, and the y is to the first power. Since they have the same variables that have the same powers, this would be like terms. So these are like. If we look at this one, I say, well, they both have x. They both have y. But the powers of the x are the same. The power of y's are not. So since this is y squared and this isn't, these are not like terms. So I'm going to say not like terms. If we look at this, we have a and a. We have b. We have b squared. And maybe at that point we say, hey, this is b. That's b squared. This is c squared. That's not being squared. So we can see they have the same variables, but each separate variable does not have the same power. So these are not like terms. What about this here? I see negative 5 and I see 4, but I don't see any variables. Well, these are both 0 degree terms. They're just numbers. Numbers, if they have no variable, are like terms. So yes, these are like terms. They're just numbers. If I had to do a mathematical operation to them, 
I could go ahead and do that because they are like terms. What about 2x and 2? Well, all these examples, we didn't really look at the numbers. We looked at the variables. This has a variable of x. This does not. The coefficient doesn't matter here if we're just determining like terms. So no, this is not a like term. All right, what about this one? This one I put off to the side because it's a special case here. I look at this and I say, OK, I have the variable of r and s, and each are raised to the first power. And here I have s and r. Are these like terms? Well, the answer is yes. But I want to qualify if you didn't see that right away. If we remember the commutative property of multiplication, if I have 2 times 3 or if I have 3 times 2, I get the same result. Since these are the same variables to the same power, they are like terms. But the commutative property says the order doesn't matter. I have an r and an s. I have an r and an s. They're just in different order. These are like terms. So sometimes we've got to watch very carefully of where our variables are placed. All right, so we're going to move on to another concept. And it deals with that commutative or associative property. And it also deals with the distributive property. Hopefully, we remember the distributive property. If we have something like this, we can distribute to both values within those parentheses to get a times b and a times c. If we have subtraction, it doesn't change the property of the distributive property. It's a times b, a times c, which gives me ab minus ac. So it doesn't matter if it's addition or subtraction. The property still applies. So when we have like terms, we can think of undoing the distributive property for just a moment. And with practice, you wouldn't even have to do this step. What you can do here is you look at this and say, hey, these are both multiplied by y. Just like both of these were multiplied by a, they have the same value. What if I worked it backwards just for a moment? I could say, well, they were both multiplied by y. So both 8 and 14 are multiplied by y. I undid the distributive property. And now if I think about it, 8 plus 14, well, those are just numbers. Those are like terms, just like these were like terms. 8 and 14 is going to give me 22. 22 times y is 22y. Now, if we look at this, we can see x squared, x squared. These are like terms. I could think of it in terms of undoing the distributive property, pulling these x squareds out. But before I do that, I have to be careful because of this coefficient. A lot of times, students will miss that this is a negative 1. Negative 1 of these x squareds plus 4 of these x squareds. So I'm going to skip the undoing of distributive property. You can go ahead and do that if it helps you keep track. But now that I've identified these as like terms, it's 4 of these minus 1 of these. Notice what I did there. I did the uh, commutative property of addition. It doesn't matter the order in which I combine. I could say negative 1 plus 4, or I could say 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, but 3 what? The 3 of these x's being squared. So with enough time and practice, you'll get to that point where you'll see this and just say, hey, I can combine those terms. Here I have 2x plus 3y. Can I combine these terms? No. Because they're different terms, I can't do anything with them. OK, this was supposed to be an x here. So if they're not like terms, I can't take anything out. I can't undo the distributive property. So it is what it is. I can't simplify this any further. If we think about it in terms of x's and y's, it's a little difficult at times. Sometimes we want to think of something we can relate to. So I put these two examples here so we can see, well, if I have two x's and three y's, then I have two x's and three y's. It is what it is. But if I have two x's and three x's, I have a total number of x's. We think of this if I had two apples and I had three oranges. Well, I'd have two apples and three oranges. I can't put them together. 2x's and 3x's, well, that's like saying I have two apples and I have three apples. I have a total of five apples. Well, in this case, I have a total of five x's. So we have to be very careful to identify whether they're like terms or not. Let's move on. If we look at this example here, we have negative 5 plus 8. Well, those are just constants. We've worked with integers in the previous sections. So I can say negative 5 and 8, they have different signs. So I'm going to find their difference. I know their difference 
is 3. And now I can determine the sign. Is it a positive 3 or is it a negative 3? Well, the larger value is positive. It's a positive 3. So those were like terms. We combine them. What about this one? We see, well, we have 8y's and 14y's plus 2. Well, these two have a y, so they're like terms. I can combine these, 8y and 14y, just like I did here, to get 22y. 22y plus 2. Can I combine these? No, because this is a constant. That's a variable. They're not like terms. That's as far as I can take it. Just like back here, when I had 2x and 3y, I couldn't go any further. If I look at this, just like in this example here, we have negative x squared, positive 4x squared. These are like terms. I can combine them. And when I did, I got 3x squared. But now I have to add an x. They have the same variable, but they're not the same power. So that's as far as I can go. They're not like terms. This here, x squared and x cubed, same variable, but they have different powers. So I cannot combine them. This is as far as I can go. x squared plus y or x cubed is what it is until I find out what x is, and maybe I could evaluate it. So <clears throat> uh, take this time to go into the homework, try some yourself. Try lots of them. Practice will make perfect. So keep practicing, and thank you for watching.